everybody, my name is Maria Diallo. I'm 18 years old and I'm from La Belle Luna. It is more than an honor for me to be a part of the 2013 Miss Guinea North America Scholarship Package. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Fatma Javade. I'm 19 years old. I'm originally from Kankan, Guinea. I'm very proud and honored to be part of the Miss Guinea North America 2013 Scholarship Pageant. Thank you. Hello, my name is Fatima Diallo. I'm 25 years old. I'm from Leiluma, Guinea, and I'm honored to be a contestant at Miss Guinea North America 2013. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Khadija Jallo. I'm 21 years old, I'm from Mamun, Guinea, and I'm very honored to be a part of the contestants of Miss Guinea North America 2013. Good evening, my name is Ahama Sulai Rahi. I'm 22 years old, I'm from Dalaba, living in New York City, and I'm very proud to be part of the 5th edition Miss Guinea North America Scholarship Project. Thank you. My name is Sona Ulare, I'm 18 years old, I'm from Paraná, Guinea. I'm so happy to be part of the Miss Guinea North America 2013 Scholarship Project. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Mariana Sonko. I'm 24 years old, and I'm from Moria, Guinea. I'm so honored to be one of the contestants of Miss Guinea North American Pageant 2013. Thank you. And fierce, my beautiful life. The problem we have that I mean we don't value doing small things but they're not small because they can change people's life. But in my eyes, it is the richest. Not because of the resources. It's good, but you know, you still have to work on it. Maybe you need to work with her. You know, because she definitely knows how to bring her emotions out. I want my passion in your classroom. I will learn how to turn it into dedication. Please let me bring my survivors into my bed. It's there. Even if they don't speak the language, even though the majority this year do, but the, for the ones that don't, they and it's just like they connected with her, I'm sure they're going to connect with you if you continue like that. Add more to it. Very good. Welcome to Miss Guinea North America 2013 Leadership Conference. She is recognized as leader in the community for her contribution in advocating and empowering women towards a bright future through beauty and health. As a Guinean, a mother of four children, she is one of the greatest women that broke the chain of illiteracy and survived among women of Guinea. In her quest to break down the barrier, she has an associate in life science, bachelor in biochemistry, and is currently working on a master's degree in public health at the University of Maryland. Please welcome Mrs. Santé. Our third guest panelist is um, Ms. Makalisi. She was a delegate at Miss Africa USA pageant in 2007, 2008. And as Ms. Guinea USA 2007 and 8, she publicly advocates through foundation for the elimination of female genital mutilation. Makalisi has a lot of exposure in activism, scholarship issues, and social organization, social causes, both in the US and Africa. Her duties are to ensure that details of the organization activities, appointments, and awards are publicized and communicated appropriately to the membership, also to the wider audience as necessary. Please welcome Ms. Matalisi. <laughs> the past week, Ms. Sarata Kandi came in from Indianapolis. And um, from, uh, from Ohio, and she's been coming every year since she first participated in Miss Guinea, and she's been phenomenal. And so, thank you, sweetie, for being here. And she loves Pageant Week, and she comes every year. To and uh, Miss Batiketa is our super energetic, super super energetic 
Miss Congeniality 2011 because she has such a lovely personality that everybody loves and she's available, she helps the girls. So thank you for being, you know, there for the girls and for doing your own part. And everybody else, thank you. My name is Maria Diallo. I'm 18 years old and I'm from Lobo, Kentucky. I graduated from high school last June and I received a scholarship to go to the University of Lobo to pursue a, a career in pre business and marketing. I strongly believe that education is the key to the radical and positive change Guinea has been waiting for more than 50 years. That's why I called my platform a battle against poverty. This platform is not something I picked up when I decided to come to Miss Guinea. I've been working on it since I was 15 years old. I founded my NGO like in 2009 and it's called Lampham Policy in Guinea. In 2010, we organized a campaign against the participation of children uh, during the electoral campaign. Uh, when I talk about poverty, the first thing that comes into our mind is uh, lack of money, hunger, or uh, basically poor living conditions. But today, I'm addressing mental poverty, which is a lack of education. I believe, like Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. If we Guineans invest ourselves in promoting education, we could accomplish what others think is impossible because an educated Guinea is a self-sufficient and better Guinea. My, my primary goal is to help renew a school located in Kindia. It's called Balawundi. It burned down in 2010 and 2011, excuse me. And like the school is facing overcrowding. It is really hard, like you understand, for the student to study in these conditions. I've already started to work with the Muhammad Ali Foundation in Lobo and the Bridge Kid community in order to come up with some type of fundraisers we could do to help the school. I also plan on working with the women in the community uh, to find solutions to help the school in the long run. My second goal is to empower school dropout to go back to school. Uh, through conferences where hopefully my friends here will be my guest speakers and talk to them about the importance of education and let them know that it's never too late to learn. I believe in education for all and I hope that each and every one of you will come help me because they say alone you go fast but together you always go far. Thank you. My name is Fatma Jabadi. I'm 19 years old. I, I live in Vancouver, Washington State. I am studying management information system at Clark College. I am a student ambassador in my school and I'm part of the National Honor Society. I'm a member of the International Student Organization and the Public Relations Director of the French Club. Well, my platform is called Light for the Future Generation. And I'm sorry that, you know, at first my platform was on education, but then I changed it to this because I felt like I was more passionate about this when I was talking about it than about education. So my platform, Life for the Future Generation, offers hope for children in Conakry to have electricity available to them whenever they have final exams. This will help them study more improve their grades and easily pass their classes. I'm going to explain this to you. I'm going to explain to you why this is important and personal to me through a little story. When I was 13 years old, I was going through an exam that we call in Guinea Brevet. It's an exam that you have to pass in order for you to get to high school. So I remember every time that I was studying, my dad will always, always try his best to make sure that there was electricity available to me, for me to study. Even if he had to go outside at night to get gas for the generator, he would do it just for me not to lose the opportunity to learn something that night. And then one day during the week that was leading to that final exam, I went outside to um, buy bread with my dad. And that's when I really noticed other kids singing on the, in the streets of Conakry, on the floors of gas stations, trying to study because they don't have electricity at home. I told myself that one day I would, I would bring an end to this problem. And that's why 
I, I, this is what encourages me to spread ahead this, this platform furthermore through campaigning, through working with different organizations like uh, Conakry Electrical Network Rehabilitation and Extension Project, which has the same vision to help provide generators in, sc in schools in, in Conakry, or at least for me to raise funds so that the schools that do have generators can have money to buy gas so that kids can just come around and have a safer environment for them to study. And really, this, this concerns us all because this is not how we want the future generation to learn. We want to give them the opportunity to be educated leaders. We want to create for them a safer environment that will keep them off the streets and, off, and, and out of trouble because that's what eventually will lead to the growth and the development of our country. And I, I strongly believe, in my own small way of thinking, that through my Light for the Future Generation project, I will be able to create and be the change I want to see in Guinea, and most certainly make a difference. Thank you. As Tati Hawa said, I'm 25 years old. I'm from Bayluma, Guinea, but I live in Virginia. I'm currently a grad student at George Mason University where I'm pursuing my degree in psychology. Uh, my platform is on education. My mission is to support dedicated students in Guinea so they can be confident enough to continue their education. Before I came to the United States, I was in Guinea. I went to school in Guinea for a couple of years. And what I noticed is that we lack the support that we need to, from adults and from a, our community to show us that education is important. And what I want to do with my grandparents' house is into a community center for children who are dedicated to their education. My community center will serve as an after-school program and a weekend program for children so they can come to get uh, homework help, extra educational support, and through, if we have guest speakers, we can they can be educated through why education is important. Regardless of whether I went with Guinea or not, I plan on using the experience and the relationship that I have built here to help me and support me through fundraising charities. So I turn my grandparents' household into a community center. I know my grandparents would be happy to know that their house is, is going to serve as a community center to pursue my dream. Her father built a house for her grandparents who have passed away. And uh, the, the houses in the village empty. It's been sitting there for years empty. And that's the house she's talking about that she hopes to turn and put to use and turn into a community center for our village, you know, so she can house the, the children. My name is Kenny Jalo. I'm 21 years old. And I'm from Mama Guinea, but I live in New York City. Um, I'm a student at the State City University of New York studying business administration where I hope to get my bachelor's in May 2014. My platform is clean water. Clean water because in Guinea, some people do not consider clean, safe drinking water an important issue in our daily lives, health, and the health, and the health of children who attend school. I remember being a little girl in Guinea and watching people walk kilometers every day to get water to cook, clean, and drink because they were they did not have um, their own their own pipelines or water wells in their neighborhoods. My grandfather was one of the few people I knew that owned a water well in his village, and that is why this is extremely an important project for me. My goal is to one day be able to provide clean water for all Guineans. But in realistic terms, but in realistic terms, I will start in the village which I'm from, as I mentioned, which is Mama. Because in order to succeed, I believe I must start small. According to your name, geographical database, the population of Mamo is 41,619 people. Every project will give at least 1,000 people in Mamo clean water to drink for 10 years. As you can in North America or not, I will associate myself with organizations that I have worked with in the past, such as Children Education Alliance, African Women for Good Governance, African Black, Face Africa, African Day Parade, and Solar Youth Organization. This will help raise awareness here in the United States and in Africa. 
through social media campaigning, advertising, and, um, and, and marketing responses, starting with one well at a time. People can manage solid waste, repair water springs, and promote hygiene practices. For less than $20, your support can help bring clean water to 1,000 people in a village for 10 years, as I said before. For 10 years, a child will be safe from malaria and not going to school because they're sick. And for 10 years, a mom and a dad will be able to work without being interrupted to provide for their families. And for 10 years, young girls won't be abused in the streets of Guinea because of the long distance they work to, they walk every day to fresh water. And for every sponsor, there will be t-shirts and packages of the village they sponsored and it's by them. I'm 32 years old. I'm, I'm 22 years old. I'm a math major at Lake Everest College. I'm a president of Shape Group, women's group named Shape, standing for sisters having a definite and excellent strategy. As a leader, I don't, even, I don't only live for my beauty or my physical appearance, I live for a purpose. Before coming to Miss Giving of America, I only asked myself one question to get my platform. And that question was, what do you keep to develop in my mission? And the only answer that I could come up with is the use of Bible, our future leftists, those who hold the future of our the future of our nation, the next generation. To me, education is the most powerful tool for success. Because with this knowledge, we can solve problems and make wiser decisions. From what I have learned and even experienced, Children in the urban areas don't have much to do to remain busy and continue their educational level. According to this, according to promoguinate.org, the high standard, the high standard the student goal in terms of their education is the highest chance they have to drop out because they don't have their supplies they need to further their education. In my village, named Dalaba, has only one high school and no university. And imagine those children leaving their parents to come to the city and continue their education, which they don't have a place to stay. But it's still the same issue dropping out because they cannot skip the they cannot skip that issue. It's still dropping out. As far as expenses, these students are are, on, are still on this of dropping out. In fact, my village is known as the best city to produce potatoes in my nation. I know for a fact that there is, these families in the village have farms that they are growing with their, with their children, but they don't have the financial to produce their own crops so they could sell it in the city to have money to put their, to put their children in the school and buy their supplies. My purpose is to, my purpose is to collect fundraisers for example, I'm part of the, the I'm part of the Bigsville Farmers Market in my community. My purpose is to collect money, asking for fundraising, asking for fundraising, creating a program on on the go on the Google or selling books, one and selling books, lemonades, juices, so I could provide money for my own to buy fertilizer for those youth who are in the village who cannot afford something. Because I know my education is the most important thing for me. And I want to fight for those children who are less fortunate to get to further their education because they only have one high school in there. And I want to have that fertilizer, give it to them so they can so they can produce their own crops, sell it, you know, change that they will help me recycle that money. And I mean pass it on to on to each student. And my first step is to start with four students. Give them the fertilizer, they want to put in their own crop sell it to be to be able to pay for their own school. As my mother always say, in Fulani, meaning that Rather than you pay, rather than you feeding someone each and every day, why can't you just teach them the way that they can feed themselves? As these students already have their lanes, I want to help them through fertilizer so they can feed their own self, be self-sufficient and self-maintaining, as I want to be an independent woman, not waiting for any kind of man to help me. Thank you. My name is Sona Ulari. I'm 18 years old. I'm from Farana, Guinea. I live in Maryland, 
and I am a senior at Springbrook High School. I will graduate in college next year and I will study business management and international relations. Je vais faire mon plateau en français parce que je n'ai fait qu'un an ici. Mon plafond est devenu un aide aux entrepreneurs en Guinée. Avant tout, d'abord, j'aimerais dire que être orphelin ne veut pas seulement dire un enfant qui a perdu ses parents, mais c'est aussi un enfant qui n'a personne pour le guider dans la vie. J'ai choisi ce projet personnellement parce que, en Guinée, contrairement aux États-Unis, les orphelins sont exploités et ne sont pas traités convenablement. Chez nous, en Guinée, précisément dans la capitale à Conakry, il y a beaucoup d'enfants qui traînent dans la rue parce que tout simplement ils n'ont personne pour, pour, pour les guider ou s'en occuper d'eux et aussi ils n'ont nulle part où aller. Selon les recherches que j'ai faites, il y a environ 10 orphelinats en Guinée. Il y a 8 qui sont à Conakry et les deux autres sont dans la capitale. Il y a, il y a 8 qui sont dans la capitale de Conakry et les deux autres sont à l'intérieur du pays. Mais celui qui me préoccupe le plus est l'orphelinat du Macané. Donc, pour travailler avec mon projet, je vais essayer de travailler avec la fondatrice de ce orphelinat qui est Dimakane. Et la fondatrice s'appelle Madame Amnata Dimakane Silla. Ce orphelinat est situé à Conakry, précisément au quartier de Tawia, dans la commune de Ratoma. Et l'orphelinat a 40 enfants en son sein, dont 18 filles. Dont 18 filles. D'accord, je vais venir en aide à ce orphelinat en les envoyant des lits, des vêtements, de la nourriture, mais aussi des soins médicaux. Mais mon objectif est d'apporter à ces orphelins le plus de, hein, le plus de soutien et d'aide possible. Je compte les venir en aide, comme je l'ai dit, en les apportant le plus de soutien et d'aide possible. Et mon objectif est de faire des levées de fonds et pouvoir procurer aux fournitures des habillements, de la nourriture et des soins médicaux pour l'orphelinat du matin. Comme je vais dire aussi, toute seule, je ne pourrais pas faire grand-chose. Donc, je sais qu'avec votre aide, avec, avec l'aide de chacun d'entre vous ici, et bien entendu le comité Miss Guinée Amérique du Nord, j'en serai capable d'aider les orphelins de Dimakane. Well, she, her platform is on uh, helping orphans, and uh, she has uh, identified a particular orphanage in Guinea, in Conakry, and uh, she would like to work with that orphanage. The orphanage has 18 girls, I think 40 kids, um, and 18, 18 girls among the 40 kids, and she would like to help them by raising funds and, and bringing medical supplies, school equipment, health, you know, bed, clothing, things like that. And she hopes that, as Miss Guinea or the Miss Guinea organization and all of you included, would help her, you know, guide her and uh, help her be able to to help that orphanage in Guinea. There's about ten orphanages in Guinea, and I think there's eight in the capital city, according to her research. And there is two inside, like different parts. Of Guinea. So the, this particular one that she picked is the one she feels like needs the most help. And uh, her goal is to be able to help them. Okay. My name is Maria Nesmoko. I'm 22 years old and I'm from Moria, Guinea. I, actually, I live in Maryland and I'm a nursing major. I would like to be, I would like to be a pediatric surgeon. My platform is about, is about um, prenatal care. Prenatal. Yes. Ma propre expérience de la vie m'a aidé à comprendre et à voir l'avantage que j'ai de vivre ici aux États-Unis. Comparé à ces jeunes adolescents de mon âge qui souffrent de solitude et de mauvaise hygiène de vie alimentaire. Le choix de, le choix de mon projet est personnel. En ce qui concerne, il y a une jeune fille de mon âge qui fait partie de la famille qui a voulu me donner un autre qui a voulu donner mon nom à son nouveau-né. Et son, elle a perdu son nouveau-né. So, cette histoire m'a vraiment dévastée et m'a rendue plus forte. C'est pourquoi je veux me battre pour ce de quoi je suis passionnée et être la voix pour ces jeunes filles. Tout, 
toutes ces difficultés que font face ces, ces jeunes filles de Guinée. Précisément en ce qui concerne l'hôpital de Donka dans la commune de Dixie. Il est ciblé qu'à l'hôpital de Donka, entre 1900 et 4000 jeunes filles entre 20 ans, entre 16 et 20 ans, meurent every, euh, tous les ans de problèmes, complications pendant la couche. Rendez-vous compte, ces jeunes adolescentes de 22 ans et la plus jeune de 16 ans souffrent 22 heures sur le lit de l'hôpital de Guinée, dans, euh, précisément dans l'hôpital de Donka, sans péridurale. Mon projet, j'ai l'intention de créer une, organisme de com une organisation communautaire, c'est-à-dire ASBR, avec l'aide de la Croix-Rouge belge et des, des, euh, des dons que je pourrais reporter ici aux États-Unis, de différents matériaux, c'est-à-dire des, euh, des draps de lit, des, de la nourriture, que ce soit des bouteilles d'eau, Quoi que ce soit, ma mission serait ciblée sur trois jeunes filles de Guinée, pour commencer, que je prendrai en charge, que je suivrai du début de la grossesse jusqu'à la fin de la grossesse, tout en ayant un suivi. Grâce au don de, de la Belgique que je pourrais avoir pour avoir des, des pilules contraceptives, pour diminuer le nombre de de jeunes filles et de, de, pour, donner, pour diminuer le nombre de femmes enceintes, précisément des jeunes filles de mon âge. Et grâce au, à vos supports, à vos, grâce à vos supports, je pourrais mettre en place un fonds suffisant pour aider ces jeunes filles de Guinée. Merci. She's talking about teen pregnancy, and she would like to uh, her goal as Miss Guinea or at least her platform with Miss Guinea is to be able to to help teenage pregnant, t pregnant teenage in Guinea be a voice for them and uh, be somebody that can guide them as a mentor. Because the reality and the fact of the matter is we have teenage pregnancy every single year in Guinea. You know, so why not just face it? And uh, what she's saying that according to her research and database, we have between 1,500 to 4,000 teenagers that die of, you know, premature birth and things like that at a hospital. Uh, called Donka, which is the hospital that she has identified as the hospital that she wants to work with. And she does have some connection with the Belgian Red Cross organization, and she intends to work with them to bring help to these young girls in Guinea, and also to bring um, uh, preventive measures, teach them preventive measures, so they can avoid, you know, pretty much being pregnant at a teenage year. So, Here you have it, you've heard all of them, and uh, we're gonna hold our comments and questions still over here from our guest panelists of the afternoon, and then we're gonna open it to everybody else. But... Bonsoir, soyez les bienvenus. Je compte à remercier Maria Diallo, particulièrement de m'avoir choisi d'être paneliste de ce soir. J'en suis vraiment fière, et j'espère que je vais apporter Euh, comment dirais-je, euh, ma contribution en, en motivant ces jeunes filles qui sont là ce soir, qui veulent être Miss et qui veulent vraiment aider le pays et qui veulent apporter quelque chose pour notre pays. Je vous, euh, comment dirais-je, euh, je vous remercie beaucoup d'être là. Et euh, comment dirais-je, moi comparé à vous, nous sommes euh, peut-être... Euh, First génération qui sont venus dans ce pays sans guide, sans conseil de qui que ce soit. C'est comme si tu prenais un enfant, tu le mets au milieu de l'océan, tu dis ok, débrouille-toi, cherche-toi. Mais on a pu s'en sortir. On a pu s'en sortir. J'ai pu aller à l'école parce que ça a toujours été quelque chose d'important pour moi de d'aller à l'école, de, de, de faire quelque chose que j'aimais et aussi de donner ça à mon pays. Donc, euh, ça n'a pas été facile, ça a été un long chemin. 
Quand je suis venu, je ne savais pas, par exemple, quelle matière choisir. Qu'est-ce que je pouvais choisir Qu'est-ce que je pouvais faire pour donner à mon pays Ça m'a pris beaucoup de temps. Mais finalement, je suis arrivée à identifier quelque chose que j'aimais. Ma passion, j'aime être en contact avec les gens. J'aime les enfants. J'aime les femmes de mon pays. Donc... Euh